We all saw how Kimino Kafka performed with his kaiju powers despite being a 32 year old man with no innate powers to the point that he could barely unlock 1% of his combat suit. Yet as a kaiju he stood at a level where he could easily trade blows with the vice captain Hoshino. But what would happen if a real prodigy of the 3rd division of the defense force got a kaiju's powers? And no I'm not talking about Shinomiya. No I believe that Reno Ichikawa is the real star of that group. Whilst Kikoru was getting trained day and night by her father and inherited the strength of once the greatest soldier of the defense force Reno Ichikawa didn't have such an extravagant past instead he built his future brick by brick he learned all he could from cleaning kaijus adapted to the environment around him and understood how to increase the combat power of his suit to maximize the potential of the outburst of his weapons when you would argue that since Reno would still get the same powers as Kafka that there would not be much of an overall difference present however it must be taken into consideration that the powers and that, that the way they can be utilized are completely dependent on the user and the creativity of that person for example when kafka was protecting everyone from the exploding kaiju he turned various parts of his body into boosters and against his fight against the vice captain he was constantly hardening areas of his body to ensure that he wouldn't get killed by his slicers however this was a wasted talent as kafka never showed any more different fighting technique and against kaiju number 2 it was just a straight up fist fight kaiju number no. 2 had a signature type of attack of releasing electromagnetic energy in passers and the shock wave could destroy even a named kaiju's limbs however we did not see kaiju number no. 8 signature type of attack which suggests that there is much opportunity for growth you know ichikawa would have been able to keep his identity hidden for a lot longer and with his cool headed thinking we would have gotten a much more dangerous kaiju against the fight with kaiju number no. 9 it would be highly unlikely that he would be able to live after that fight as i don't see reno allowing such a mistake where he is able to escape however the real problem comes with the attack of the kaijus on the third division force base as reno is forced to engage with the dai kaiju from the start it could have forced hoshino to fight both the kaiju from the start and it's unlikely he would able to be survive such an attack however a more plausible reality is one in which reno is able to transform secretly without attracting any attention however from this point is where it would get most interesting as everyone would realize that another kaiju had just saved all of them slowly realizing that a kaiju much stronger than anything they had ever faced was on their side served as a double edged sword because the reality that there exists a kaiju that they couldn't control would definitely put the board of directors at unease but getting past this it begs the question if reno has the same loyalty to the defense force as kafka does whilst kafka got imprisoned and nearly killed he still displayed an unwavering royalty to the defense force and what they stood for this mainly stems from the fact that he has a childhood promise to fulfill to captain ashiro and one day stand beside her however reno has no such connections and seeing him disregard all connections with the defense force and hunting kaiju on his own to take us from the classical good guys bad guys storyline that we have seen repeatedly over and over again moving on to some spoilers right now so guys skip about 15 seconds forward but in the manga reno becomes compatible with kaiju number no. 6's weapons which further improves his ability however i still think that in terms of versatility and strength kaiju number no. 8 would have been a much better fit and it goes to show number no. 6 hand in hand combat with his unique skills adapts to the situation at hand for example when he learned that using freeze rounds instead of the burst allows him a greater time to slow down the enemy while he fought which made it easier for him to hunt down kaiju using the other characters as reference points we can compare and see how much he has grown in such a short period of time as when he did the first selection exam he was below that of furahashi but easily surpassed him as we saw in the fight against kaiju number no. 9 but he was still below that of ai but just a few episodes later in the attack of the Y1 kaiju we can clearly see that there is a very high skill difference because apart from Kikoro no one was able to hunt them down and it must be taken into account that Kikoro had a special weapon designed for her at the time Kafka's movements are so crude in comparison to that of Reno due to his lack of training and utilization of 
his combat suit, so it's a fair assumption to make saying that Hoshino would have a hard time landing even a single attack on such an agile monster. And using only speed alone, he is able to counter Captain Mina quite easily, as it doesn't matter how powerful her full release is if she is unable to land a direct hit. And the reloading time involved with that weapon makes her quite vulnerable to frontal attacks. Kaiju number 2 was portrayed as a huge beast. However, Kaiju number 8 is much more human sized and with the variety of techniques that Kafka has displaced, it begs the question. Is Kafka able to increase his size to one that is usually present in a Dai Kaiju? As even in Kaiju number 10, after getting completely beaten, he too reverted to his massive size. However, I don't think this is possible for number 8 as his hole is already in place where his heart is and he won't be able to increase in size without destroying his heart. And as we saw in number 10's fight, when his size increased, so did his hole. And it doesn't seem logical that Hafka's human body is able to withstand such a transformation. Too much is unknown of Reno Ichikawa and of Kaiju number 8 to fully understand how compatible they would be with each other, but it's very clear that there would be a very big difference on how the storyline would have played out with the prodigy leading the story.